Okay, this is a video I've been wanting to make for you guys for a little while. Uh, after walking the path, you know, this entrepreneurial path that we've been on since the very beginning, we've made a lot of mistakes. Let's call them lessons learned. And one of the biggest mistakes that we've made is innovating in a space or a marketplace that didn't actually need or require innovation. So we started with this product that we invented. It was called a Nunai Smart Blanket, and it used an NFC chip in the tag. And parents could take a cell phone and they could tap the tag of the blanket and it would pull up the child's emergency information. We provided like geolocation, just a whole bunch of functions, but it was completely unnecessary. We had built a product like many people before us that the market didn't want. Now the problem with innovation and creativity in general is that it requires a lot of time, effort, and energy to come up with something new, a new way of doing things, and it may be rejected by the marketplace, by the consumer, because it's not really a solution to their problem, okay? And the current and existing model of products that are offered solve that problem already. And so in the consumer's mind, they're asking themselves, first of all, what is it? Why do I need it? Why do I want it, right? And the other products that are in that space right now already answer that question. So the problem that we encountered a couple times before we stopped making this error is that we would enter a marketplace with new ideas and how to do something when it wasn't something that actually was needed at all. Oftentimes, the best solution is looking at what other people are doing, figuring out what it is, why it's working, and then emulating that with your own product and maybe a slightly different marketing message. It's a lot easier to do. It doesn't require you to innovate at all. You can source the product from the same supplier they are, looking at port receipts online. You can get the material in and then you have an idea of what distribution channels are working for them and you can test other distribution channels they might not be using, okay, to bring your product into the marketplace. Once you're in a position where you and those other companies are competing, that's a good time for innovation because then you can differentiate your offering from theirs based on data because you know what's working. Instead of going into the market blindly with just your big ideas, hoping you're gonna make a difference and make money. I'll tell you from experience, it's unlikely that that will be the outcome. But I think when- Wait, hold on. Christine wants to get on this. Come here. Oh, okay. over here. Main source of- <laughs> <laughs> what the oh, hell are you doing? <laughs> German Shepherd wants to be part of the conversation as well. So what do you what do you think about innovation in business and when is it appropriate and and how has that played into your experiences? Lie down. Lie down. So for innovation, like you were saying, innovation takes an extremely long time. Dog, <laughs> you're not paying. Okay. Come on, lie down. He's a wolf. That's Kaiser. Okay. Lie down. Down. Thank you. No, we're good. Okay, so it takes a long time. So you have to have either already a stable cash flow, so maybe your uh, part-time job, full-time job, whatever you're mm -hmm. doing, um, or you have to have a big chunk of money to work with mm -hmm. in order to float you until your innovation takes off. Because like we found, you can innovate like with the smart blanket and put it up on the internet and no one's going to no one's know gonna about it's it. Gonna no one's going to see it. Yeah. So it take, it's not just about innovating and making the product. There's a lot more to selling just a single product. This dog wants my attention the entire video <laughs> if you guys does. can't tell. Come here, get up here. Lie down. So I think Thank you. in order to innovate, you either have to have dog. You're from a headlock. Hi, <laughs> okay, she's gonna going to spill my coffee. Going shark mode okay. on me. Stop. Take two. He's so moody. He's such a baby. He's, he's, moody. A, he's such a he's a, a very moody German shepherd. He's such a grump sometimes, you know that? You. I'm gonna have to go bite his tail. Hey. That's enough. Yeah. One kiss. Oh okay, that was more than <laughs> right. All right. Okay. So back Wait, to the just topic. Ignore the Lie dog. down. He's gonna keep doing his thing. He's just in a weird mood. Um, in order to innovate, you should have either an already stable cash flow or a big chunk of money that you can help float you along until your innovation takes off. Because it's not going to If be your goal just... is to make money. Well, I mean... I, but some people's goal is not to make money. They just like to make shit. And then, and then that, they're, that they get well, joy they... out of making something. But Okay, so they yeah. still need a cash flow unless they're living in a cardboard box on the side of the road. 
up next. We actually had an idea, I gotta share this with you guys, where we were like, oh my god, it'd be so cool if we found if we made a company where we just sent we basically it's like a mail subscription service where we just send you cardboard boxes and your children oh, play in them. See, this you know? is why being creative is such a so boon. Awful. Because that would be That'd be such a cool that'd idea. That'd be so easy. I see, it's not it's one lesson learned. It's not the ideas that are difficult. It's getting people to know about your ideas. It's the execution of the ideas. It's always execution. Well, no, I mean, not the execution. Well, I mean... Technically, yes. Kind of. It's more about how you get known, how you get visibility, how you're, you know, how you're seen. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many things on the internet, especially, that you have no idea exists. You couldn't see in mean, one lifetime. Many, yeah. yeah. How many times do you come across a YouTube video and you're like, what the hell is this? I didn't even know where did, yeah. Where did this come from? So, Just so I you guys, yeah. you gotta get, this dog, he gets annoyed at us sometimes. I think he might have an empty water bowl. So Probably. he'll just do this pacing, scratching, uh. nudging, like jumping on you type of thing until, until he has your full attention. And that dog is smart because you know what the number one rule of selling anything is at all? What? Which is what we've been talking about. What is it? Attention. Attention. Eyes. How do you get people mm -hmm. to know you exist? That's your right. product exists. So it's not really execution. I mean, we could just buy cardboard boxes at Home Depot and start shipping them out. Mm -hmm. It's how how do you get people to know about your cardboard your idea. boxes? How do you get the yeah. idea in front of the right eyeballs? And that costs money. Because you've got to figure out, ask yourself, okay, well, who has my target audience's attention mm -hmm. and how can I siphon some of that attention either through Instagram hashtags like a focus group Facebook of people ads. maybe it's a Facebook group maybe it's yeah. maybe it's a you know magazine maybe it's an art is articles on a website know, I don't know you have to know your Video. audience like that yeah. um that uh, interview we were watching with Damon John and Grant Cardone mm -hmm. um Damon was saying that he knew his audience to a T when he was selling FUBU t-shirts he knew who would buy him, who wouldn't buy him. He knew that you know his target audience were big, tall guys. Yep, like they the, weren't like the women. hefty guys. Yeah, they Not weren't like women. Me. He knew mm -hmm. you know where they shopped, when they shopped, what they went for. Mm -hmm. Like even if it didn't pertain to you know FUBU T-shirts, he knew their income. He knew where they lived, what they were driving. Like he knew his audience to a T. Yep. And that's that takes time, which also takes money because then you're not working. On something else that could mm -hmm. be making you money. So, in summary, if you had to kind of just kind of take that and put it back in the box here, I feel like it's kind of all over the room. Yeah. So, if you're gonna innovate, you got to make sure you have all your ducks in a row. The best place to start is to find something that's working, something that you're passionate about, something that you can be authentic about, and copy it. Don't copy it exactly. Find, um, you know, if you like T-shirts, there's plenty of T-shirt stores on uh on the internet and there and there's ones that are profitable and working and you got to figure there out are. which ones those are and maybe then what's like, working for them right and then emulate that right so maybe so. like you know dog t-shirt you know t-shirts with dogs on them yep. is working but you really like cats t-shirts with cats on them do the same type of imagery or if there's wording on it that if it's you know a and, comical and just, just a or, technical I just want to put this in there real quick, is that the reason that you would do cats over dogs, and this probably is obvious, well, is because you have more data about cats because you like cats. Well, yeah, so you can kind of look at it. Interested. Yeah, you can get a feel for, is this going to work? No. Okay, would this work? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it gives you, you have more of a hunch because you got some data to go off of. you got a model understanding of the cat space and what, you know, what people like. Right. Maybe it's the Nyan cat with the rainbow. But yeah. people buy that thing on a of shirt course. or a cup. They already are. But see, we don't, we're not uh, <laughs> super into that market cat t shirt. We don't like cats. <laughs> I was just saying. But so if you're gonna innovate, you have to make sure that you have the money uh, already set aside or you have a stable income. Maybe you're still working a full time so you're job saying the same while thing you're over doing over. this. So money. So innovate so you're saying the innovate Christine, you're saying the innovation yes. requires money. Mm -hmm. In other words a stable cash flow or yep. a an investment or someone else's money. Mm -hmm. And it requires attention eyeballs right which is basically supporting what i'm saying as well these go these two points of view go well together because what i'm saying is that you need to look at what's what's working in the marketplace yeah emulate that mm -hmm. okay model your competitors you know that's the best way to learn yeah exactly yeah. you'll learn that way too mm -hmm. and then you can introduce your product and then when you're in direct competition with them and you have stable cash flow like she's talking about mm -hmm. that's a good time to innovate, to innovate yes yeah. yeah we got it
Woo!